Okay, guys, we're going to try this one more time. And I uh, appreciate, uh, appreciate you, Ralph, uh, telling me that uh, there was no sound. I don't know. This is a new computer. Well, it's not new. It's new use. But anyways, so I'm going to try this again, and hopefully it comes out the same in terms of content. But um, I wanted to uh, talk to you guys about... Um, non-farm payroll tomorrow it's probably the one of the biggest events of the month and uh, just kind of look at a couple of the pairs based on that now comes out at 8:30 New York time tomorrow morning now at the same time there's Canadian news too and just a uh, some a minute on that uh, the Canadian dollar has been hit really hard this week you know oil inventories uh, are higher than usual and so that's having a negative effect on the on the Canadian dollar now they are expecting <clears throat> a significant decrease in uh, jobs produced. Uh, they had 40.6 thousand, so about 40 thousand. The last time they reported, they're expecting pretty much flat this time. So there's not going to be a lot of expectation for good news. So if this comes out better than flat, you know, better than this point two, then that's going to be good for the Canadian dollar because the market's going to be looking for anything positive. And the unemployment rate's expected to tick up a tiny bit. So if that comes in at you know 7.2 or better, then um, that's also going to be probably considered to be good. And that'll be important to note when you look at these pairs. Um, <clears throat> so um, I, I think that's that's important to see. And so like I said, this is a huge difference right here. So so but getting back to the U.S. dollar, um, so. They're expecting a miss. Uh, they're expecting a lower employment change, 203 versus 215 last month. Um, they're expecting uh, unemployment rate to stay the same, and they're expecting average hourly earnings to stay the same. Now, a little precursor to NFP is right here. Uh, yesterday we had the ADP non-farm non-farm payroll change, and and that was a miss coming in at 156. It was just a really low number. Now this this really does not have hardly any effect on the market. They have it as red level, but honestly, it really doesn't have much effect because it always comes out two days before NFP, which is the bigger one. But it's an indicator, and a lot of times NFP follows this trend. So if that's the case, then uh, <clears throat> NFP, then this number here, it may actually. Uh, I wouldn't be surprised if this comes in under 200,000, and that's kind of the benchmark. If it does come in under 200k then uh, I would expect it for that to be bearish for the dollar and especially if average hourly earnings gets hit because this is a very important number the unemployment rate itself uh, you know this may go up or down you know 0 0.1 0 0.2 in either direction I don't think that's really the bigger thing these are the two big ones so so anyway so keep that in mind um, and watch the Canadian dollar too now the uh, two things there's basically three things that can happen here uh, concentrating on this you can get a you can have a trend uh, in place when this comes out and the news ends the trend in other words let's say there's a there's a pair going up the news comes out it's negative that you know and it's in a, a wave five or it's you know it's approaching the end of the trend there's divergence on the CCI or whatever and then you know the news comes out and it boom it ends the trend or it could end a correction if the market has been correcting the news comes out um, in the opposite direction of the correction, that ends the correction, the market goes back in the direction of the main trend. Or the third thing that could happen is that um, it has no effect at all. And on occasion, when these numbers come out pretty much exactly in line, there's no green, there's no red, and just comes out exactly as expected, then it's kind of a non-event, and you'll just see the market kind of move sideways, choppy, and that's it. And you know, it's a Friday, the traders say the hell with it, and they go home for the weekend, and you don't really see it do anything. And uh, so that's another possibility. Uh, I guess there is one more possibility, too, and that is that the numbers come out mixed. Let's say one of them comes out green, the other two red, or some combination of good and bad. And then what you see happen is the... Um, the trend has one last push in the direction of the trend and then it stops in reverse so you think it's going up the trend's going to continue up if it's going up and then all of a sudden you know the the market reconsiders the numbers and boom the trend ends and it slams the other way so it's not just that it's going to be sitting there doing nothing and then all of a sudden it reverses it could actually go in the direction of the trend a little bit more and then under second thought or second review 
then it goes back down. So those are all the things that can happen. So if we just look uh, at a couple of pairs here, I'm not obviously not looking at much, but so here's U.S. Swiss. And if you remember when I went back uh, maybe a month or so ago, I did a video, this is the weekly chart, saying the U.S. Swiss looked pretty bearish, that this was kind of a, a big ABC pattern that may have finished here, and that we're heading down. And since then, it, it, it has been heading down. We've had higher, uh, lower lows, lower highs. And... Uh, but we certainly have rallied this week. Here's the 12-hour chart, the daily chart. Uh, we've rallied um, pretty much the last few days here. Um, this is Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. Here's today. It's been pretty flat today. No, actually, no, I'm sorry. This We've already started a new day because it's after 5. So this is Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, and this is actually the Friday candle that started. So the last three days, um, we began to rally. But overall, um, you know, this has been moving down. And uh, you can see um, we're starting to get divergence here on the CCI indicator too. As we're going up, it's going up spread apart, which usually indicates that this is corrective. Now, it's very bullish in terms of the fact it's going straight up, so I'm a little cautious about it. But, but so right now I have this labeled as an ABC. This could easily be, you know, a one, two, three as well. Um, but I think uh, what you're looking at here is potentially when the news comes out you know we're correcting down and we could be heading up tomorrow morning overnight during Asia and early London could be heading up and then the news comes out and either ends the trend and heads down or it's kind of moving sideways the news comes out mixed you get one last little push up and then it goes down but either way I think this is probably going to go down this trend is very mature and I don't see that it's going to you're going to have any big push up so I think either way it's going down. The question is going to be whether this is a corrective move or whether this is resumption of the larger downtrend. So uh, right now I have it labeled as an ABC. So that's U.S. Swiss. Um, so again, that would be bearish for the dollar. Now to look at the euro dollar, which is the opposite of the U.S. Swiss, it's completely opposite. And again, I have this labeled as an ABC. We have this move up here. And then this looks, this could be a zigzag ABC. Now this also could be a one, two, three, and we're in wave three, but again, I'm gonna keep it as an ABC zigzag. And it is approaching, this arrow right here represents the 61.8 retracement. Right now it's at about the 50. So this is the 61.8. So I think it's still gonna go down a little bit more. This is gonna probably correct, kind of move sideways overnight. Early London tomorrow, I expect it's gonna go down, at least come back into the area of this arrow. And then when the news comes out, we'll see. You could have another little push down and then reverse or a hard reversal at the time of the news. So, but again, um, whether that ends the trend and uh, we, we move up for a correction or whether it ends the correction and we move up either way, I feel that this is going up. Okay, so, and that would, again, um, it's the opposite of the um, U.S. Swiss. Um, other dollar pairs, um, cable, which I don't trade a lot, but... Um, uh, the cable um, has been in a pretty steady downtrend here. Now, it did looks like it made a bottom here and it's moving back up. And this this does appear to be uh, uh, a, an end of a trend on this. So one, two, three, four, five. Now we're in a correction down, and then. You know, I would again. I would expect that this correction would end and would push back up. This is the 12-hour chart. Um, uh, here it here's that trend on the four-hour chart, and again correction down. So again, I would expect the cable to continue moving down into early London and then eventually push back to the upside. I'm seeing this to go back up. So that that would tell you again about the um, the dollar weakness. Okay, so. So that's how it looks right now. I'm just those are the only pairs I'm going to look at. Um, well, let's look at U.S. Canadian. Now, U.S. Canadian is another one that's been moving kind of straight up. We've had an extended downtrend here, uh, moving to the downside. Uh, however, um, this has been very bullish and moving straight up. But again, this looks like a nearing mature trend. So either way, I expect this this is going to go up a little bit more, and then either we'll end this trend and move down. Or this could be a correction and we move sharply down then and resume the longer downtrend. Now, but again, my hesitation is that this is moving up very, I mean, this is going straight up. 
but I think a lot of that's being driven by the Canadian dollar has been very weak um, oil inventories as I mentioned at the beginning etc so I do think that this is being driven more by weakness in the Canadian than strength in the dollar so uh, and if that's the case then um, you know we will see this reverse and uh, sometimes corrections do look like trends so so we'll see uh, US yen um, you know yen crosses are completely different animals this is more risk on risk off um, <clears throat> you know if the dollar weakens then this is going to fall back again um, and, you know if risk is taken on by the by the yen but this is a completely different animal so and uh, so like I said uh, US Canadian looks looks to be nearing the end of a trend at some point up here okay uh, for all the Canadian pairs again this is uh, pound Canadian uh, this looks to either be uh, an eight ending an ABC here soon uh, I have it labeled as an ABC or possibly a one two three on the pound Canadian um, but I'm gonna go with it being an ABC that's gonna end here uh, um, tomorrow um, and again if the Canadian news comes out better then this probably would reverse and head back down so but either way this is a mature trend and so either way I would suspect it's gonna end and it's gonna at least correct to the downside so again the, the way that the charts are setting up is that the Canadian dollar will be strengthened and the US dollar will be weakened on the news okay euro Canadian just a quick look at that same thing um, overall downtrend uh, in place here correction to the upside potentially a correction um, this does look like a again a mature trend here and that this might push up you know this this could push up again this might already have been the end of the trend we're going to be an a b and then down for c for a significant down move or this could be could be a, a wave five setting up here but uh, it looks kind of out of proportion to the rest of this but either way I think it will drift back up and then down which again would be Canadian strength so uh, anyways that's the way it's looking um, again um, let me know what you think uh, post the comments here post it in the Skype room if you're part of the Skype group and um, you know let me know but uh, good luck tomorrow be careful especially if the news comes out mixed don't get whipsawed around um, but, uh, you know, do your own analysis, come to your own decisions, because I could be completely wrong. And, uh, you know, I will be obviously looking at the charts early tomorrow morning um, before any of this happens to kind of see what they did overnight into early London and then make a decision based on that. So, anyways, that's it, guys. Have a good evening.